What is it like having Jack back in your life? In my life, it's, it's well, surprising would be the first word. Uh, we had put this to bed for a reason. Howard Gordon, our lead writer, uh, was, was tired. He, he had written 196 episodes. It's an unbelievably prolific amount of work. Uh, it's almost equivalent to 100 films in, in, in an eight-year period. Uh, so I was very surprised. I actually called him to congratulate him on his Golden Globe win for Homeland. And he said, I'm really glad you called. I want to talk to you about something. Um, so it, it was a surprise. Uh, and John will tell you, uh, we were working for three days, uh, and I was bugging the life out of him uh, every, every five, ten minutes. Does that, does that feel right? Does that, yeah. does that seem right? Does that, does that seem familiar? Anything like that? I was, I was quite nervous going into yeah. it. Well, the bar had changed, really, with series like Homeland. Were you worried that, that 24 would be welcome back? Um, no, because 24 is a very, very different show. Um, I wasn't worried about that. But we had set the bar for ourselves with the eight seasons that we had done. And I think, you know, every season, John and I will tell you, we never thought was perfect. Uh, but we were very proud of them. And, and the last thing you want to do is to damage the legacy of a show that you've put to bed. Uh, and, and so that certainly gave me cause for thought. And, yeah. uh, and having said that, now almost finished, uh, I'm so glad that this was the decision that we made, uh, and it's just been an unbelievable experience, and I think, arguably, we've made the best season of 24. Right. Yvonne, what is it like to be part of that? You're a newcomer into all of this. Yeah, uh, I feel like the new kid on the block on this stage. <laughs> I don't feel like that on set, though, because I sort of, um, well, there's a lot of new people in this, and I feel like I have more to do with them new kids on the block than I do with the old kids on the block. So it's good. It feels like we're making, even though it's, it's been a long running show and, you know, it's, it's had its break, it feels like it's still really fresh for me anyway, while still delivering everything that I think people are expecting to see in this show. I see you were, you were stripped to the waist there. I looked up, I thought I was looking in a mirror at one stage <laughs> um, there. Uh, you've obviously had to get yourself in, in good nick to do this. Well, I think the show is really physical. And my experience with 24, and it's never let me down, it's not a question of when you get injured. Uh, it's not a question of if you get injured, it's a question of when and how severely. Um, and so the, the better shape you're in, I mean, I'm trying to kind of tell you that it's not completely narcissistic. Uh, the better shape that you're in, uh, the better chance you have of getting through a season sure. uh, without running into real trouble. And yeah. so I was lucky that I had uh, four months to kind of, kind of prepare for this. I wasn't doing another show. Yeah. So. Uh, all the scars and whatever, we know through the previous eight series yeah. how you got all those things. Um, then there's the tattoo. Mm -hmm. Is it true Bauer got the tattoo and you were fed up going to makeup? getting it reproduced in you? No, it's, no? it's, it's not actually. The, the truth is kind of worse. I really <laughs> wanted the tattoo. And I caught John after a couple of beers and said, don't you think it'd be really cool if these two characters had the same tattoo? And he said, yeah, that's a really great idea. Didn't say go do it. He yeah. just said, yeah, that'd be a cool idea. So I went and got it. And then the other poor actor had to wear the stencil makeup tattoo for the rest of the show. It was just something I wanted. So. What was it like to be <laughs> in London? I feel kind of like a bad kid being an American in London. Like, I'm going to get in trouble with the Queen, but... Um. I mean, you saw all the glamorous sights. I mean, in the second episode, we see you in Ealing, in a lovely... <laughs> in a, in a, in a, in a, it's a lovely council estate. We, you call them, I think, a project in America? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, it's, it's real. It's keeping it real. Were you worried about the look, the American look and the slickness and whatever it is may not have transferred? Well, I think in, in, if you see a show in America and... and Friends might not be the best example, but they kind of are required to go to London Bridge, Big Ben, yes, and Westminster yeah, yeah. Abbey. And if they get to Buckingham Palace, fantastic. <laughs> um, and I think I always love the, the, and John and I had talked about this, I always loved the film The Long Good Friday. And, it, and I remember seeing it and not having spent a lot of time in London before. And I thought London was very cool from that visual perspective. Uh, this is inherently, this is an American show. And like it or not, we think about the American audience first. And this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for us to, to not only create the international quality of the show this time that we've never been able to do before, but you're going to have an American audience, 70% uh, of which don't have passports. Uh, they're going to see London for the first time through this way. 
uh, and I think it's unbelievably stimulating and, and, uh, and just is going to add so much uh, for the American viewer. Yes. Um, and then just worldwide, it's just such a colorful change for us mm -hmm. uh, that I think it just gives it a, a much larger international global feel yeah. than anything we've done before. But because it's over such a short space of time, well, what, you've, you've done it in five months or so from start to start to finish, uh, and yet it's only 24 hours. It's 24 hours. So what happens when your hair grows or um, is, are there continuity problems? I mean, what, what's, the, what's the big thing? What, what, what happens? Give us an insight Don't to that. Don't eat too much. Don't eat too much. Because <laughs> if you put on weight, it's really bad for the show. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, there's all, you know, Don't we're, get pregnant. we're all cutting our hair every yes. three weeks, every four weeks. And you get your hair cut every four weeks? Well, you have to, because yes. otherwise, if it grows, it doesn't match. Yeah. Pick the right shoes. Yeah. Pick the right shoes is really important. Because you're going to wear them a lot. Because you're going to wear them yeah. for five months. Okay, uh, just looking around the audience, there's a hands up there, yeah. Um, in the gap between the last series wrapping and starting shooting this one, what did you miss most about playing Jack? It was funny, you know, we had worked with a crew for eight years, 98% of those people were with us from day one to the very end. I think over the course of the eight years, 32 children were born, 42 marriages happened. Um, I know it sounds trite, but we were a family. Uh, and I went to say goodbye to the camera operator, and we used to have a phrase, we danced together, and his name was Guy. And he did some of the most beautiful handheld work I've ever seen in my life. And he was like working with a really talented actor. I mean, we fed off each other. And I went to shake his hand, and I'm gonna do it now too. I went to shake his hand, and I went to say it's been an honor. And I'm not a real crier, and my lip went, and I had to look away, and so mm. did he. Mm. Uh, I miss that. I, I miss my friends. And I think that was the hardest thing for me to let go of, and I think that will always be uh, the thing that I miss the most about the show. Um, you know, with, with regards to the character, if I want, I can pull out some old scripts, and I can do that stuff at my house. But I just, I, I, ended, up, I ended up missing the people. Uh, when you returned to your characters, was it like riding a bicycle or were there any surprises still in store? Well, our hair changed for a start. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I had a lot of um, anticipation and anxiety leading up to it, wondering what was happening, why it was happening, where it was going to be happening. Um, and it was certainly exciting, you know, to be in this location and to, to create this look for this character. Um, but once we were on set, there's a definite familiarity there, for sure. And um, the history between us is like pretty unspoken. But the cool thing about this version of it is that there's so many new elements as well. So it was kind of an amazing mm. mixture of being able yes. to go deep with it and put other layers on top. Yeah. Our first day wasn't with Kiefer. I think the second day was Kiefer. And, uh, and his very first shot, just by chance, it's not like I planned it, was the camera pushing in on him and he's going up with the, the, the typical Jack Bauer pose and he runs by the camera with the gun up, which you'll see in, in episode two. And I kind of looked at him and he looked at me and I went, yep, it's like we never even left. It was yeah. just right away we knew we were all back. And then of course, I think we did 100 setups that day. So it's not like we had time to think about it. We just did what we usually do on 24 is move really quickly. Thank you for bringing it there. Yvonne, lovely seeing your debut. Superb. Thank you very much indeed. Always lovely to see you, Mary Lynn. And Jack, welcome back. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much for coming Thank out you. this evening. It was so thrilled to show you.